is up guys welcome back to my channel welcome back to another vlog i was going back and forth with myself on whether i should film this video or not in my mind i feel like it's already february so i'm like what am i doing filming this video so late but even though i'm a little bit late to this i really want to talk about these books and another thing i'm really excited about is that last year i did not reach my reading goal probably because i made it so insanely high i literally told myself in 2022 i was going to read 118 books I don't know what I was on. I don't know. It was destined to fail from the beginning. But in 2023, I gave myself a realistic goal and that was 50 books, which I did reach barely. I literally read my last book on New Year's Eve. Honestly, that book is a big reason why I'm even doing this video because I have to share this book with you guys. I filmed the video where I talk about my favorite reads of 2023 during the last week of the year. And then a few days later, I started another book right before the year ended. And it ended up being one of my favorite books of the entire year. But anyways, we're gonna get started with this video. I hope you guys enjoy. Also comment down below, what is your reading goal for 2024? Mine is 60, but yeah, comment down below. And we're gonna get started with this video. I have my Goodreads account right here. First book I read in 2023 was this one right here, The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. I don't know why I was reading like a full on thriller book right at the beginning of the year, but I gave this book four stars back when I read it. And I do remember really enjoying this book. It wasn't anything crazy. Like it's not gonna be like the craziest thriller you've ever read, but it did keep me entertained the entire time, which is really all I ask for in a book. As long as I'm not bored, I'm probably not gonna hate it. So yeah, this was a good one. And I remember I watched the Netflix show right after and I liked the book better, not gonna lie. Next, I read this one, By a Thread by Lucy Score. It was really good, it was entertaining. It was like a workplace romance, grumpy sunshine, but it just wasn't anything crazy. And the one thing about Lucy Score books is that they are so long. This book was over 500 pages and this is a rom-com. And for me, I feel like a rom-com should not be that long, but that's definitely like a personal, thing about me. I gave this book four stars, so I did enjoy it. It just did feel a little bit too long. Next book I read was this one, You Are Not Alone by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. So it's two authors. I gave this book three stars back when I read it. I was confused for most of this book. I didn't know what was happening. I was just like waiting for a plot twist to happen and I don't think it ever happened. So I was just confused the whole time. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. Okay, next book was a really good one. There's actually five books in one. There's the whole Mindfuck series. This was a five-star read collectively. Like I said, this is five books in one, but I don't think all of the books were five stars. I think it was in the middle during book three and like half of book four that it was starting to lose me a little bit, but in the end it got really good. I really enjoyed the story. It was basically about a girl that is a serial killer and the love interest in the book is the FBI agent that is on her case they fall in love but he doesn't know that she's the serial killer that he's actually after it was a five star read and i highly highly recommend this book it was really really good okay i'm going to talk about two books really quick because i don't have the physical copies of them anymore but i read two books in the same series it's the fantasy league and the red zone i don't have the copies of the books anymore because i donated them in a little free library i saw a quote on tiktok of the first book and i thought i was really going to enjoy it so i bought the first one and the second book together and i unfortunately didn't enjoy them at all it jumped from one thing to another and it just made absolutely no sense it's a sports romance series which i typically enjoy but i didn't really enjoy those two i think i gave both of those three stars then i read a five star book i don't know why this book wasn't in my favorite books of 2023 because now that i'm thinking about it i literally enjoyed this book so much this was a five star thriller book i recommend it to literally any human being that wants to read a book i think it's amazing i think it's so good it keeps you at the edge of your seat the entire time the major plot twist in this book I did not see coming at all. If you wanna read a book that's gonna capture all of your attention, this is such a great one. Like there is not one boring chapter in this book. Then I read this one right here, Made in Manhattan. The main character in this story is pretty much Blair Waldorf in a book. It was amazing. It was so entertaining. It was so freaking cute. If you're a fan of rom-com movies, the cuteness of it all, and it's a little cliche and maybe even unrealistic, Lauren Lane books will be your thing. I'm not even kidding. I think they're so, it's like a breath of fresh air. If you want to read something that's going to be good while you're reading it, and it's not going to change your life or anything, but it's going to be an enjoyable read with good writing style, Lauren Lane books are going to be your best friend. Then I read the book that became my favorite read of 2023. You guys already know, I'm not even going to go into depth about this. I love this book so much i was pretty much smiling the whole time i was reading it except for the part where i was bawling my eyes out when i was reading it this was like 10 million stars out of five it was so amazing then i read another one of my favorite books which is magnolia parks while i was reading this book it literally felt like i was jumping in 
to that universe of this entire story and living this book with the characters and I feel like that sort of reading experience can only be done by a really really good author. If you haven't read this book or this series I highly highly recommend even just reading the first book seeing if it's for you or not. Then I read a book that I'm sure we all know which is Icebreaker. I actually really really enjoyed this book. The only thing and I feel like I'm gonna sound like a Debbie Downer about this but I don't think I was as obsessed with it as other people were. Do you guys ever read a book and then you hear other people talk about that book and you're like did we read the same book? That's kind of what happened with this one but I did really enjoy it and I do still recommend it. It's like a really cute hockey romance book. Super spicy, super cute. Um, yeah, I liked it. Then I read Rock, Paper, Scissors. This is one of my favorite thriller books of all time now. I remember I was like two chapters in with this book. It was like 11 p.m. I was getting ready for bed. I was like, you know what? Let me just read a chapter or two before I go to sleep. I think I fell asleep at like three in the morning that night, but I physically could not put this book down. It was so incredibly good. And I feel like Alice Feeney knew just what she was doing with this book because every single chapter ends in a cliffhanger. So you can't put it down. Like you have to know what happens because the endings end with such a good cliffhanger every single chapter. Then I was kind of in the mood for a little dark romance. So that is when I started the Never After series and I read Hooked, which I really, really enjoyed. It's a dark romance series that takes a villain from a Disney movie that we all know and makes the villain the main character in the story. So basically the villain gets a happy ending. It was the perfect way to start this series. Then I read The Final Offer, which was the last book in the Dreamland Billionaire series. I genuinely feel like I'm the only one that thinks this, but I love this book. I enjoyed it so much. The trope with this book was really interesting. It was childhood of friends to lovers, to strangers, to enemies, to lovers. I really, really enjoyed it. And part of the reason why I enjoyed it is because since it was the last book of the series, I loved how it tied everything together from the first book to the second and then to this one. So it was a really nice ending to a series that I really enjoyed. And then I read one of my favorite books of the year. This is my year of rest and relaxation. I wish I had like the perfect sentence that you need to hear to want to read this book because I feel like everybody needs to go through the experience of reading this book. It's absolutely amazing in such a subtle way. And I love this book back when I read it and I continue to love it now. It's gonna be probably the strangest book you've ever read, but it somehow might end up being one of the best. Then I read The Maid. This book wasn't really like a thriller book. It was more of a whodunit type of book. I thought it was really fun. And the main character is so likable, like one of the most likable characters I've read. So yeah, it was really, really good. Then I read another Lauren Lane book. This book is basically a modern take on the movie You've Got Mail, which is one of my favorite movies ever, like one of my favorite rom-coms. It's about these people that are messaging each other on this dating app where there are no pictures. So you just have to like them based on their personality and they're texting each other and they really, really like each other. But little do they know that they actually know each other in person and they hate each other or despise each other in person. It was just really really good and it was one of those books that I really 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 didn't want it to end. Then I read another really popular book this year, Happy Place. I gave this book 4.5 stars. It took me a while to get into this book which is why it wasn't a five star read for me but then I got really really into it. I fell in love with all of these characters. The setting of this book was amazing. It was just really really good which I completely expected because it's Emily Henry and I've never read an Emily Henry book that I didn't love. Then I read one of my favorite books which is this one yours truly by abby jimenez this book was absolutely everything i adored this book so much the characters the plot it's one of those books that i will continue to recommend as much as i can if you're a fan of romance you would love this book. You're literally reading about these two characters that are so incredibly perfect for each other. It's everything you want in a romance book. I'm telling you, you have to read this book. Then I read this one, Meet Me by the Lake by Carly Fortune. This book and this like reading experience was really interesting. There were some parts that I really, really liked and I was like, oh hell yeah, like this is a really good book. And there were other parts that I was like, oh, am I enjoying this book or am I just like tricking myself into thinking that I'm enjoying it? It was definitely a cute story, but it wasn't anything groundbreaking. You know what I mean? There has to be a category that is just cute. Like that's it. It's a cute story. It doesn't go anywhere else. Next, I read this book right here, Things We Hide From The Light. This entire book is almost 600 pages. I genuinely can't remember what happened for most of this book. All I know is that this like sort of bad girl falls in love with the cop of the town and they wanna date each other, but then they don't. I genuinely don't know. It was a cute story, but it's not 600 pages worth of cute. You know what I mean? This book kind of felt like I had to get through it to get to the next book and to have the series make sense for me. It just wasn't my favorite, which is unfortunate because this cover is like the cutest in the whole series. It's just all pink and it's so cute. Next, I read Park Avenue Summer. This is one of my favorite books of all time now. It kind of, in a way, sort of, feels like a combination of Daisy Jones and the Six and Seven Husbands by Evelyn Hugo. It's a very different plot, but the vibe 
and the feel of it is very similar. It just talks about how hard and unfair it is sometimes to be a woman, especially in the time period that this book takes place in. Anyways, I love this book so much. Next, I read Part of Your World. Absolutely amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. Another book that I feel like any romance lover would love and it has a lot more depth than you think it would have. A lot of things that happened in this book, I actually still think about now. Then I read another Lauren Lane book, Passion on Park Avenue. This one was a tiny, tiny, tiny bit less memorable than the other first two. It's basically about this girl that her mom used to clean a rich family's house. And there was a boy in that family that was her same age. His family didn't treat her and her mom in the best way. And then she grew up and became a really, really successful and wealthy woman. And then she happens to move into the same apartment that her mom used to actually clean. And her next door neighbor in these like Upper East Side apartments is the same boy from that family who's all grown up now. So it's enemies to lovers and it's close proximity. And it's just honestly a fun time in a book. Then I read The Editor. This book took me so long to get through, but honestly thinking about it now, I really really enjoyed it. It's one of those stories that kind of like sticks with you, even if you don't expect it to. I love anything and everything about Jackie Kennedy, and this book, even though it was fiction, had a lot to do with her. So even though it did take me a little bit to get through, I did really enjoy it. And then I read this book, When in Rome. I loved this book more than I'm willing to admit. The setting in this book was a small town that was described in such a charming way. Like think of the town in Gilmore Girls. It was a very, very similar vibe to it. The love story was really, really cute. Every other character in the book was likable. It literally just had everything going for it and I loved it a lot. Next book was this one, Once More with Feeling. It had a lot of Broadway and musical references, which I think was one of the parts that I really, really liked. Not even just like the love story that was going on, which was kind of cute, but I've just never read or known anything about like Broadway and the people that perform in the Broadway musical. So it was really, really interesting to get to know a little bit about it through this book. The couple, like now thinking about it, I don't think this couple, it's like, you know, there's some romance books that you're like rooting for this couple and you're like, oh my God, yes, like they have to be together. This isn't one of them. Funny You Should Ask was honestly like an amazing read. I didn't really feel the same with this book. Next was honestly a disappointing read. I literally got sucked in by the cover. It was summertime. I was like, let me read this cute cover rom-com book. I didn't know where this story was going. Like I thought it was supposed to be about this like vacation that this friend group takes. And I would say like the first quarter of the book was about this vacation, but then they come back home and the book becomes about something completely different. So I honestly didn't really enjoy this book. I think I gave it like three stars which might be generous. I'm so sorry for this lighting. If you're still watching, I love you. Okay, next book was Love Theoretically. Absolutely amazing. You guys know this if you watched my favorite reads of 2023. If you've been wanting to give Ali Hazelwood a chance, I highly recommend you check out this book. It's so good. I actually gave this book five stars, which is kind of shocking, but when I think about it, it's really well deserved. I loved it. Okay, then I read King of Pride by Anna Huang. This is the second book in the Kings of Sin series. I don't know why, but I thought there were only going to be three books in this series, but you guys were the ones that told me that there's actually going to be seven books in this series. So one for every sin, which is honestly amazing. I will read anything and everything Anna Huang puts out. This one was pretty good. It wasn't as good as the other two in my opinion, but I did still really, really enjoy it. I think because it's set in the same universe as the other two, like everybody's a billionaire, everybody's powerful. It's in New York, it's fun. I honestly did enjoy it and yeah. Then I read this one, Scarred, which is the second book in the Never After series. I loved this book so much. If you're looking for a good dark romance book to read, read this one. That's all you need to know. It's so freaking good. I think I've read three books now in the Never After series and this one is my favorite by far. Then I read this one, Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. This one came after When in Rome and it revolves around the same town and the same characters and the same family Just a different couple with a different love story. This one was really really good But I will say I didn't like it as much as When in Rome I think because in When in Rome everything was new like the town was new the characters were new So I was like reading and discovering everything for the first time. It was still really really good I just liked the other one a little more then I read this one the housemaid This one was a really really creepy story Like I could just not imagine being this character like if I was the main character I would have ran after chapter one. I'm not even kidding it's basically about a girl that gets a job with a really, really rich family and the family and her bosses are just so weird and creepy. It's really good. It's really eerie. There's a lot of plot twists and I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm making it one of my 2024 reading goals to read more Frieda McFadden books. Okay, next I read this one, Things We Left Behind. I loved the couple that this book revolved around. I think this book and the first book in the series are tied together with how much I like them. But yeah, it was really great. Then I read Wretched. It's almost exactly like the Mindfuck series where a cop falls in love with a criminal and it has that vibe. It was really good, really enjoyable. From Hooked, Scarred, and this one, this is probably my least favorite, not gonna lie. Okay, Fifth Avenue Glamour Girl, absolutely amazing. I love this book. It's just like womanhood in a book. It's amazing, it has everything you need 
to make a perfect book. I loved it. Next book is Daisy Hates, the second book in the Magnolia Park series. This book started out by being a little weird. I was like, wait, this is really messy. This is really chaotic. And then I remembered I was reading the Magnolia Park series, which is literally the series where everything is messy and chaotic. And instead of something getting better, it gets worse. But somehow it still leads up to be a really, really, really great book. I just really, really love this book and the continuation of the story. Then I read this one, Behind Closed Doors, which is a thriller book. This book was really, really creepy. It's basically about a marriage that to everybody else looks perfect. However, hence the title Behind Closed Doors. Everything behind closed doors is just the complete opposite of perfect. It's actually kind of awful, like this couple's reality. It's one of those stories that like sticks with you, but in a really awful way. Like I really don't want to think about these characters. Like for most of the stories I like to read, they're happy and they kind of leave you with a good feeling. This is the opposite of that. This will leave you feeling like the world is terrifying and that you really don't know anybody because I feel like this couple could be anybody that we know. So this book left me feeling like the world is an awful place, but it was really entertaining and it's creepy. Pretty much everything you want, a thriller and like suspenseful book to be. So yeah, next I read this book, Brutal Prince. I didn't really like this book at all. Like I've said, I really enjoy reading dark romance books. And I think if you also read dark romance, you definitely know that it's very unrealistic. It's super ridiculous, kind of like all of these things that they're doing. And you know, there's like zero chance of them happening in real life. But I feel like with a good writing style, it's still an enjoyable story. This one was definitely not that. It was very ridiculous and unrealistic, which I expected. But the writing style of this book made everything make absolutely no sense. And I honestly didn't really like this book too much. Then I read this one, King of Greed, the third book in the Kings of Sin series. I loved this book. I do think it could have been just a little bit longer because it's basically about this married couple that have been married for 10 years and they've kind of like let a lot of things come between their marriage. They still love each other, but it's just not working in their marriage anymore. So they get a divorce while still being in love with each other, which eventually leads to them getting back together. But I feel like in the part where they were getting back together, there had to be a little bit more going on, but it was still really, really good, really enjoyable, and I am literally dying to read the rest of the series. I think it's amazing. Then I read the saddest book of the entire year for me, A Thousand Boy Kisses. It felt like watching A Walk to Remember all over again. It's really, really sad, yet beautiful at the same time. Even though I did cry my eyes out, I don't regret reading it because it's a really beautiful story. Then I read this book right here, Fourth Wing. I loved this book, like I said, more than I thought I would. If you're watching this and you haven't read it and you're probably the last person on this earth that hasn't read it, honestly, just read it because I think there's a big chance you're gonna be absolutely obsessed with it. Next, I read this book, You Again. I gave this book four stars. This was a modern take on the movie When Harry Met Sally. The overall vibe of this book was really, really great. It wasn't a five-star read for me, but it was still an enjoyable one. Then I read this one, Forever Interrupted. Just thinking about this book breaks my heart just a little bit. I completely adored this book. Something about her writing style is just absolutely perfect to me. It keeps you engaged and in this story the entire time. Even if you're reading about something incredibly sad like this book is, you're still in it, you're still obsessed with it, you can't put it down, and it's all because of the way that she writes, I feel like. But yeah, this was a five-star read for sure. We are almost there. And then I read this one, Wreck the Halls. This one was really, really, really good. I didn't read too many Christmassy books this past December, but this one, Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey, definitely makes me want to read more of them. I ate this up. I thought it was amazing. It was so good. It was a really, really good love story and a really, really good plot with a Christmas background. Like it wasn't just all about Christmas. It took place during the Christmas time, but the plot of the book was really, really interesting and I really liked it. Next, I read this one, One Day in December. Here's the issue with this book for me. Basically, this entire story is you rooting for this couple that isn't together. Like a bunch of things are happening in their lives that they want to be together, but they can't. And you're kind of like rooting for them to be together and like whatever. So basically, this entire book is them not being together and then they get together a chapter away from the book ending it wasn't the best then i read in holidays i loved this book so much it was cute it was silly it was fun and i think for maybe next december or maybe if you want like the christmas vibes in the middle of the year or whatever. This is a great one. I think it's really fun. Then I read this one right here, Check and Mate. I love this book pretty much the whole way through. There were zero complaints up until the third act breakup. The third act breakup happened and I'm like, oh my God, it could have been a five-star read, but it wasn't. It was a four-star read. It was still really, really, really good. And I loved the chess references in this book. Characters were likable. Everything was perfect, except that third act breakup. 
but we won't talk about that. It was still a really good book. Really quick before I share with you guys my last book that I read, literally the last day of the year, I listened to on Audible, I listened to Brent Spears' book called The Woman in Me. It was the only memoir that I read in 2023, which literally made me want to read more of them in 2024. It was so amazing. A lot of the things that we know Britney Spears to be, she shares a lot of the behind the scenes behind those moments, which was so heartbreaking. Like my heart literally broke for her for most of the book. I've always admired Britney Spears, but I think after listening to her memoir, I can now say that I'm like rooting for her. And that leaves us with the last book of this video and the last book I read this year, which is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. The only reason I didn't just stop filming this video and cancel this whole thing as soon as the sun went down was for me to get to this point of the video. If you're still watching, once again, I love you. <laughs> this book took me by complete surprise. And the thing that I loved the most about it was what it represents. It's not even just the plot that I loved and like the words on the page. It's literally what it represents and what it leaves you feeling. This book is so thought-provoking. It makes you question things. It makes you think about things you've never thought about before. It's about life. It's about what it means to be alive. It's about what it means to want to be alive. And it's written in such a simple, easy to understand way. And you're like, how did I get all of these thoughts in my brain from this? Quick little gist about this book. It's about this woman that is at a point in her life where she feels like she has nothing going for her like she doesn't have anything to look forward to which leads to her taking her own life at the beginning of this book which is a huge trigger warning and that is how this book starts so when i read this book i was like oh this is gonna be a really sad really deep really emotional story it made me feel like i was gonna end this book with a very like sad feeling only for this book to later do the complete opposite instead of leaving me with like a sad feeling it left me with the feeling of like i love life and here's why and the fact that i got to end the year with this book and start the new year with these thoughts that i had from this book was amazing but anyways i highly recommend you guys check this book out if you connect with it that's amazing if you don't that's also amazing you gave it a shot anyways that is it for this video thank you guys so much if you're still watching this video i want to give you the biggest hug because this lighting right here is definitely not it but i was genuinely really really excited to talk about these books with you guys anyways i love you guys very very much and i will see you guys in my next video bye